Once year I met a celebrity, but didn't let on that I knew who they were story. My dad and I bumped into Michael Jordan at a Walgreens near Chicago. This was back in 2006 or so. We were picking out birthday cards for my mom, and MJ and his son came in the same aisle browsing some cards. My dad kept his cool, and continued to look through different cards, giving him his personal space. I, on the other hand, was 9 years old and in awe, sort of staring at him. After MJ picked out his card, he winked at me, and gave me a walk by fist bump. Didn't really set in, until I was older, how cool that was. I worked at a Barnes and Noble in Isaac Clark, but once or twice I'd be called over to the in-store Starbucks cafe to help out, whenever they were understaffed. One time, Alan Rickman came up and ordered something, I can't recall what. I wrote Hans Grubber on his cup though. He smiled at me, when he noticed it. I was in a bookstore in Re, and was in the horror section. Picked up a book by Stephen King, and flipped it over, and saw his picture on the back, or inside the cover, I don't really remember. I look up, and in the next dial over, right across the bookshelf from me, is a guy, that looks exactly like Stephen King. So I hold up the book, and say is this you? Yeah. Good books. Thanks. And that was that. My husband was vacationing in Arizona, killing time in a bar over a burger and a beer. A guy sits next to him, and my husband has a nice chat with him. The guy leaves, and my husband goes to close his tab and the bartender tells him it's been covered by the guy he was talking to. The bartender asks if he knows who he was talking to. My husband has no idea. Chuck Norris, it was his bar. I helped Steven Spielberg move his daughter's bags into her college dorm. I was working a shift helping first years move in, and I see a guy in a hat and sunglasses who is unmistakably Spielberg. I strike up a conversation, ask if he needs help with the bags, etc. First names only, we are from Circa. My wife, Kate, and I sent all our kids to East Coast schools though. Stuff like that. Later, when his daughter opened the door for the first time, he whipped out a camcorder and, wearing the biggest dad grin, recorded the whole thing before turning the camera on my friend and me to ask us about the city. So, I have a supporting, the luggage, speaking role in a limited release, home movie, film shot by Steven Spielberg. I used to be a server at a Mexican restaurant right outside La in the late 90s. One day Leonardo DiCaprio came in with who I assume was his mom to have lunch. This old been post Titanic so really at the peak of his breakthrough mega celeb status. He was wearing a ball cap, sunglasses and unshaven, but I recognized him anyway. I didn't let anyone know, and I wrote something like your movies are awesome, I hope you liked our food on his receipt, when I dropped it off at the table. After he left, I swung by, and picked up his payment, and he had left me a note back that said thank you so much for not blowing my cover with a $100 tip. Shit was awesome I was only like 19. I went and got some PlayStation games with it after my shift ended. Was walking out of a gas station over on Crescent Heights and Sunset, and heard a hey, hey, coming from a cracked window on tinted outrange rover that was parked at one of the pumps. I walk over to the car to see Jeff Goldblum, who had somehow seen my gold ring I was wearing on my right hand from 20 feet away. He proceeds to tell me how he loves my ring, and has been looking for one just like it, and asks me where I got it. I tell him it was my grandfather's, and he asks to see it up close. I hold my hand up to Jeff Goldblum, he takes my hand, gushes about the ring for a minute and thanks me. I said sure, and walked back to my apartment. I like to think we are friends now. Samuel L. Jackson was on my flight. I was second to last to board the flight and there was all this commotion with the flight attendants and gate crew. Once I approached the door of the plane I realized they were all looking at Samuel L. Jackson. He was standing by the cockpit making himself available to passengers slash fans. I played it cool. Didn't say a word. Turns out, I'm shy around celebrities. I'm just glad I didn't make a snakes on the plane joke. In the mid 90s I was a cab driver. Our service was like a cross between a limo and a taxi, and we serviced some fancy resorts. As I dropped off my passenger at a resort, another guy asks if I'm a taxi, and I say yes, so he tells his friend their cab is here. His friend got in the car, and said this ain't no cab, smells too good to be a cab in that unmistakable Chris Rock voice. 
he and his friend just bullshitted with each other for the 15 minute drive to a local nightclub. There was a white kid trying to talk to a yellow cab driver ahead of us in the parking lot and Chris Rock started imitating the kid, like I need a ride, yeah, I'm drunk, but I need a ride, and I was trying really hard not to laugh out loud. He wasn't nearly as famous yet at the time, but I had seen his stand-up routines on Comedy Central and knew exactly who he was, but didn't go fanboy on him. 10 tenths would drive Chris Rock again. Conan O'Brien. My college friend's dad owned an Irish restaurant in Manhattan, and she waitressed there back in the 1990s. She said he was super rude to the staff and was a bad tipper. One day a bunch of us were walking in the city and we saw him at a sidewalk cafe. We stopped and stared, and he noticed we were talking about him. My other friend went up to his table and asked him to take a picture of us and handed him her camera. His friends at the table had a huge laugh at his expense as we posed for a picture without him in it. We never let on we knew who he was. Now we all hold dear and I'll send a photo of us with a funny backstory. My mom is a big sports fan. One time she was shopping at and saw a really large, fit looking man who she didn't immediately recognize but seemed familiar. She thought it must have been a professional football player or something, so she went up to the only other person in the shop who was this smaller weird looking guy, and asked him if he knew who the athletic looking man was. The short guy looked at my mom and said that's my bodyguard, I'm Elton John. Not sure if this counts as a celebrity, but last fall I was flying from La to Dallas and the person sitting next to me was a real housewife from Bravo. I didn't recognize her since I don't watch her show, but she did mention it to me multiple times during the flight. She wanted to apologize in advance in case there were fans hounding her at the baggage claim. Spoiler alert, there weren't. Hours later when I was checking into my hotel, she was there in the lobby and made sure to tell me again that she was on TV. Not sure if this counts, but when I was 15 I was really into playing StarCraft, being a 3 month old game at the time, on Battle.net. I did mostly 3v3 games. After finishing this one particularly epic match, close game, we won. We all got into a chat room to talk about how fun that was. I like. One of them says something to the effect of not sure if you all care, but you just beat Ben Affleck. Of course we all ask him to prove it, so he told us to wait a minute and visit his official website's message board, Ben Affleck, com or something like that. He had just made a post in red, red being Ben Affleck himself, about just losing a game of Starcraft. We briefly chatted with him, and that was it. Robin Williams used to walk around my own childhood country town near SF. I saw him once, after hearing many rumors about his sightings, not entirely unlike Bigfoot or Nessie sightings. My brain didn't fully comprehend what it was seeing. But I could tell he was trying his very best to remain incognito and not draw any unwanted attention. We locked eyes. He smiled, I smiled and nodded back, and we both went our separate ways. I was sitting at the Genius Bar at an Apple store one day and a very large man with dreads came and sat next to me. He was bringing his phone in to get fixed because he dropped it and didn't have a case. I overheard an employee jokingly say, you wear a helmet when you play football, shouldn't your phone have the same protection? I knew it was Larry Fitzgerald, but I didn't want to be a fanboy, so I started asking very broad questions about what he did as a profession to stay engaged in a conversation with him. Larry Fitz is, to this day, one of the nicest, most humble people I have ever met. I met Justin Timberlake and had no idea it was him until someone told me afterwards. Went to a basketball game with my dad, and we stopped by the bar area in the arena first. The game had just started, so it was pretty empty except for the bar itself. My dad goes to the restroom and I walk up to the bar to order a beer. There's only one seat at the bar next to a guy in a baseball cap and sunglasses. I politely ask if the seat is taken, and he just says nope, it's all you, man. We shoot the shit for a couple minutes. He's sitting on my right and eventually he says he and his wife are going to go to their seats. He extends his hand and asks my name. I tell him and ask his name. He says, Justin. Nice to meet you dude, have a good night. He and his wife leave and the bartender comes up to me and says, you know that was Justin Timberlake, right? 
I immediately did a double take and couldn't believe I didn't recognize him even with the hat and sunglasses. I told my girlfriend at the time, who was a huge Justin Timberlake fan and she couldn't believe I met him without knowing it was him. She wouldn't let it go for like a month. Met Elon Musk in a Tesla store in La. Really wanted to meet him, but didn't want to be that guy. Decided I had a plan, so walked up to him and said, Excuse me, do you work here? He replied, I mean yeah kind of. I say, ah what can you tell me about the entertainment console of the Model S? He says, let me see if I can find someone to help you. To which I say, now I'm just fucking with you. He laughed and shook my hand and walked off. My dad met Robin Williams in an elevator. He got in and they rode a few floors in silence. They stopped on a floor and s bunch of fans ran in and started getting pics with Robin. My dad said he was gracious and took pics with everyone. The doors closed and they rode a few more floors and my dad turned and said does that ever get old? And Robin smiled and said nope. Never. Then my dad got off on his floor and they nodded to one another and my dad went on with his day. I was 10 years old in 2002 when my mom took me to the Bronx Zoo for the first time. It was a rainy day, so we practically had the whole place to ourselves except for three British kids running around, chaperoned by a woman. My mom quickly befriended the woman, while I made like a kid, and joined the horde, looking at spiders and scorpions, and sharing in the awe and excitement of the animals. After about an hour, when we said our goodbyes, my mother told me that the kid, Daniel, who I had been hanging out with had played Harry Potter in the movie that came out last year. I had thought he looked familiar. When I was younger with fewer responsibilities I used to just drive around for the hell of it. To me, driving is a hobby. Late at night was my favorite time. The streets are empty. My uncle is like this too. I asked him if he wanted to meet at American Coney Island. We sat down in a booth. A couple guys walked in after us and sat down behind us. Eminem, drive. Dread, and a guy I later found out was Jimmy Irvine. We paid them no attention, but we knew who they were. They finished before us, and as they were walking out, Eminem nodded at us and said, thanks for not making a big deal about this. We got you. He and the other guys disappeared around the corner. Judd Leto. I work in an outdoor goods store in Boulder Co., which for those who don't know, is one of the biggest climbing towns in the US. He came into the store to get some stuff as he's known to travel here and climb with other big pros, notably Alex Honnold who is a buddy of his. He had been out in the middle of the footwear department by a cow walker on mine in front of a big group of customers so by the time he got over to the climbing area where I work he was really on edge and unfriendly. I walked up to him and honestly just acted like he wasn't hot shit. I acted like I didn't really know who he was and just spoke to him like any other customer even breaking conversation with him at several points to answer questions for other folks as opposed to giving him my full undivided attention. After about 5 minutes of that he totally relaxed and his entire demeanor changed. He went from being somewhat rude and cold to being very chill, calling me bro etc. And I ended up walking around the store with him for like 25 to 30 minutes helping him shop. The only time I implied I knew who he was, was towards the end as I was ringing him up. He asked me to recommend some climbing spots close to town like the Flatirons. It was a beautiful Saturday, and I said to him that those places are great, but he'll get bombarded by people if he goes there, and I recommended some spots just outside of town instead. He sorta of leaned in and thanked me for my discretion and that was it. It seemed like he really just wanted to be treated like a normal guy. I met Simon Pegg when I was working as a cashier at Borders. It was like a Tuesday in the afternoon and the place was empty. He came up to my with some stationery and I started ringing him up. The entire time I was thinking he looked so much like him, but I didn't think it was him since I wasn't in the UK and as far as I knew he wasn't filming a movie in Chicago, so it was a pretty quiet transaction. After it was done, and I was handing him his bag with his stuff I jokingly said, Has anyone told you that you look like the guy from Shaun of the Dead? He replied, I'm the guy from Shaun of the Dead. Wolf Blitzer was a monumental douche in 2004. I was working in Atlanta and staying at the Omni Hotel, which also hosts CNN headquarters. Drinking in the hotel bar one night after an exhausting day of work. 
just wanted a drink and some socializing, but not too much. So I sit next to this dude and get a drink. Keep in mind, we are sitting close together at a bar, so I never really turn to look at him. Small talk ensues, and he talks about his work and how his travel schedule is killing him. We commiserated as I traveled a lot back then. I could tell he was baiting me to ask him more and more questions, but I just wasn't into it. Finally he infers, implies that he was on TV so I bet, oh yeah. Have I seen you on anything in particular? Incensed, he responds. Yes, I'm wolf fucking blitzer. Sorry dude. I paid my tab and left. I met a celebrity, but I didn't realize who he was, I posted before in a thread, buried in 10k comments. Doubt anyone saw it. Years ago, like 20 years ago, I went to see Adam Sandler stand up at a small comedy club. Clearly I knew who he was, because I got tickets to his show. My date and I were running a smidge late, and ran into a guy in the lobby. A guy I used to work with, so I was like, hey, Danny, how are you doing? What have you been up to? He was like, I'm good, how are you? I responded that I was good, but running late for the show had to run and he said, okay, have a good night and walked off. As my date and I walked into the club, he said, you know who that was. It wasn't Danny. It was Adam Sandler. But, gotta say, he played the part of Danny well. One of his better roles.